me know if your relationship to the masculine is what's holding you back. Let's have a conversation about this. Um, I'd love to be able to shed some light, possibly on why relationships maybe don't work, why you feel like there might be more to sexuality or sexual expression with another, maybe why your uh, like heart isn't combining with your work in the world, you know, like the work that you do or job, career, like what it is that you put a lot of effort into isn't combined with your heart. <laughs> this can really, this conversation can answer a lot of, or point to help out with um, a lot of why things aren't working in our life or where we think they could work better or where they're not feeling fulfilling for us. And so I want to frame this conversation as that because I'd love for us to open our minds to anything in our lives that's not working to come to the surface in this conversation. Yeah. Because what if that thing in your life that's not working, you know, the one that you have in your mind right now <laughs> or the one that's about to pop into your mind or the one that you're like, it's fine. It, that's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm going to I'm just going to accept that that's going to be the way that it is for the rest of my life. You know, that one. But what if like we were able to see something from an angle that you didn't see it before and seeing it from that angle sheds a bit of consciousness on it and shedding a bit of consciousness on it is what alchemizes it or heals it or shifts it or moves it so that we can create something different. Like, I know this is like, like okay, Serena, I'm, I'm piecing out, man. Like this is, this is too much of a brain twister for me, but I think we can do some magic in this conversation. I really do. Uh, I started working with this energy. I call it creation energy. Uh, and it's like Kundalini, only like Kundalini on crack. <laughs> and in a real um, physical form way, it's like working with sacred energy in a way that isn't just uh, an energetic moving through our body, which is oftentimes how we experience Kundalini, but it's an energetic that, yes, it moves through our body, but it's the energy that moves through our body and is connected to that physical object over there or is connected to the world out there and can start to move the world in different ways. I didn't know we were going into this territory in this conversation. Anyways, I'm feeling this energy strongly, have been working with this energy very strongly, uh, not just here in conversations, but in physical in-person rewilding retreats. Our next retreat, actually, we're going to see if we can get the whole group to walk into it. Our next retreat is actually the doorway into that creation energy is through the masculine, is through rewilding our relationship to the masculine, up-leveling our relationship to the masculine, the masculine in ourselves, the masculine out in our world, the masculine in others. What does that do for our own feminine? What does that do for the harmony and the balance and the union of the two and that union of the two? How does that lead us to creation energy? And then once we tap into this creation energy, what can we manifest in our lives? How can we move the world around us uh, to create, right? <laughs> This is, this is big stuff. Uh, so bear with me because my sense is that if you can hang in here, um, in this, I don't know, seemingly mind jumbling kind of energy and conversation, uh, something really beautiful will come out for you. All right. Let me feel for our doorway in. I think some signs that that we could up-level our masculine is a good starting place. Uh, how do you know when there's more? <laughs> you know, the first thing that comes to mind is lack of focus. Lack of focus. If we're unable to focus, that's oftentimes uh, an underdeveloped masculine 
we're unable to direct consciousness. That's a skill. It's a skill. Isn't this interesting? And just something I don't have people with ADHD close in my life. Of course, I know people, but I don't have them close enough to where um, I could speak from an experiential place about this. But just a just a question of, you know, what if we were to train ourselves in consciousness a bit more? What if we were to train our children uh, in consciousness, how to focus consciousness, right? Because it's just consciousness. Consciousness is my my awareness, my focus, right? And then there's this penetrating capacity to it, right? This penetrating capacity. So, you know, just one of these signs, let's come back to our topic. <laughs> Get me off the ADHD topic because that's not my expertise. Uh, this is my expertise is you know, this conversation around how do we know when our masculine is being asked to, you know, up level? How, how do we know that there is more? You know, and one of those signs is how deep can you penetrate your consciousness into something? How deep can you penetrate your consciousness? It's, it's your consciousness, right? What is your connection to consciousness? What is your connection to consciousness? We we love Shakti, you know? Like we love, like, what is your connection to Shakti? What is your connection to Shakti? What is your connection to consciousness? And imagine you have this really amazing connection to Shakti, right? That's just the, if you don't know what that is, that's just like the feminine aspect of sacred energy. One way of talking about it, right? And then the masculine aspect of that that same sacred energy, right? It's like two sides of the same coin. It's sacred energy. But if we were to just take all this big, huge sacred energy and divide it into two, you know, like, okay, we need to start delineating it so we can like maybe have bite-sized pieces and possibly even talk or comprehend or work toward embodying more and more and more sacred energy. How do we do that? Well, this is a framework. It's, it's I like this framework a lot. I'm well versed in this one. There's many others, uh, but this just is my jam for whatever reason. Uh, and imagine if in your system you had you had both sides of that coin, like alive, awake, available. You know, you were able to move like Shakti is life force energy. It's a, it's life. It's like it's life force. It's like raw energy. And you had that alive, available, and awake to move. And to the same degree or similar degree, you were able to penetrate consciousness into something. Now imagine you're able to penetrate consciousness into something, focus on something, and, and, bring the juju, the shakti, the life force. So you can focus, you can direct shakti, right? So if we take this another step further, it's how able are you to direct your life force? This, these, are, these are great questions for our life. If we're feeling like we're not getting ahead, we're not achieving what would fulfill our hearts if we're not accomplishing goals, if we're not living a fulfilling life, right? <laughs> this is the answer. <laughs> this is the now I know, like it seems so simple. Like Sabrina, come on, that's just silly. That's like silly simple. But really and truly, it's it's our capacity to just think about this. Feel this in your body direct where your life force is going. Direct, that's the masculine piece of it, where your energy goes. Here's a really simple line that talks about this. Um, energy flows where focus goes, right? Or is that the line or it's like, where focus goes, energy flows. It's, it's 
it's a principle, like it's a law. It's an energetic law. Like it's a law of sci it's science, like it's science. It's science, it's quantum physics, right? If you focus on something, you automatically change it. If you focus on something, that's quantum physics, right? Just the sheer fact that I'm witnessing something, I will change it. I will change the trajectory of that proton or neutron or you know whatever it is. I will change it because I'm witnessing. That's consciousness penetrating into something and moving it. We can work with that. We can work with that. Isn't that amazing? So sometimes, you know, I meet so many people on this, like, they're on like beautiful feminine awakening paths, you know, like Shakti, Kundalini, the goddesses, you know, like I want to open up to more pleasure, more, more bliss. And, and they're, they're like, my life is out of control. I feel like I'm just being whipped all over the place. I'm just, I'm being blown over here and then I'm being whipped over here and you know, like I feel this and I sense into this and I'm now so sensitive and I feel the whole world. Here's another sign, you ready for it? Here's another sign of when it might be time to develop some more or, or take our own masculine or our relationship to the masculine to the next level, however it feels right for you in those words, but is <laughs> discernment, right? I, like, I will be so, it's just, raw about this and open and vulnerable. Like I am crazy sensitive. I am, I am crazy sensitive. Um, one of my very closest, dearest friends, she was a psychotherapist for 50 years, right? 40, 40 some 50 years. And she's like, Sabrina, I've worked with a lot of people, <laughs> like a lot over my time. And I don't know that I've met anyone with your level of sensitivity. And I really firmly believe like if I didn't have this capacity to discern, to create containers, to direct my, my focus, because that's where my energy flows, it's not just where my energy flows out, it's the energy that flows in. So for those of us who are really sensitive, right? Which I think is a lot of people in, who hang out in rewilding or hang out with me, like we're highly sensitive, you know, or we're empathic or we just feel more or like our psychic capacities are switched on to different degrees, right? We're, we're like tapping into being mystics outside of monasteries. And it's like, well, I don't know, like I'm getting blasted by so much. I'm not saying that's everyone, right? But, but once we develop a stronger masculine capacity, we, we, we have this discernment to like, no, no, that doesn't serve me to be in that environment. That doesn't serve me to be plugging into those energetics. Be it something on social media or a television show or, you know, a common one to blame it all on is the news, right? Or certain people or... Do you see what I'm saying here? So let me simplify it again or let me just kind of paraphrase a little bit, rephrase it. <laughs> it's... It's this, uh, if you feel like you're, you're almost like a, what is that other phrase around like a victim of fate versus master of destiny, right? You feel like you're just this like victim of, of energetics, you know, like, oh my God, the full moon, this and the high tide, that and the mom emotional explosion, that and the collective sadness around war and the whatever it is, right? I hear this all the time. I see this all the time. Victim of fate. And that th those might be harsh words. They, they might hurt. They might be really hard. So if we need to like 
you know, fluff them up a bit. You just take out victim because that always stinks being called victim. You know, it always stinks your victim being called out. Like we hate that one being called out. Like we would rather our like murderous be called out than our victim part of self. You know, it's just like the most taboo thing ever now is, you know, being called out on that. But so if that one's hard, you know, fluff it up, <laughs> pat it up a little bit. We can love all these parts of self. Uh, and, and so it's shifting from this, you know, fate to destiny. It, it, like I, I, I'm not, I'm not just being blown around. I'm co-creating with, right? I'm co-creating with, and part of our capacity to co-create with is to discern, is to lead, lead our own life force like lead our own life force. So if we feel like we're pouring our energy, we're pouring our energy into something that doesn't feel like it's an equal exchange, right? I'm, I'm pouring my love into something. I'm pouring my life force into something. And, and what's coming back, I know there's a lot of us in this boat. I know there is. And it's so part of the gift of this conversation, the gift that we can give ourselves is to be honest with ourselves and to be so okay because Otherwise, we're, we're painting a glossy picture over it and we're gonna push it away. The thing that's actually breaking us, we're gonna keep pretending like it's okay, but it's dulling our shine, right? It's dulling our shine. So the best thing we can do for it is make it conscious. The best thing we can do is bring it into the light, right? It's, it's like, love it in, you know, like, hey, victim of fate, like, it's cool. <laughs> you feel like you have no, no control, you know, you, you feel like everything is just overwhelming, right? Like we, and so, so if I could just pause and remind us that it's such a gift. It's one of the greatest gifts that we can give ourselves is to be honest with ourselves is to just be so honest, like radical honesty with a lot of love, <laughs> with a lot of compassion. <laughs> when we see something uh, that it, it, you know, we maybe weren't quite thinking we were gonna be seeing in a conversation on a YouTube video or in a podcast. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's kind of sum up some of this and see where this heads to next. Um, around this, uh, taking our relationship to the masculine. Actually, I don't want to sum this up because another thought just came in that I'd love to take us down this little thread is here's something interesting to feel into for yourself. Um, how this resonates or how this touches you is sometimes, um, our greatest feminine gifts, our greatest feminine capacities, our greatest feminine uh, magic, we'll just say magic, our, our greatest feminine capacities, sometimes what awakens them is the masculine. Sometimes it's, and I think some of us know this, but I think it's still like worth hearing again, even if you know this, sometimes it's worth like, well, what does this touch in me now? And so letting that happen as we go into this conversation, as I bring some more words to this, like, what is this touching me now? You know, uh, sometimes the feminine is a transmission that invokes and inspires another's feminine, right? But sometimes it's that the masculine consciousness permeates and penetrates into a place that evokes and inspires the feminine. Sometimes that, it's like the one ingredient, like the key, the, that essence is the essence required, right? To inspire and awaken this particular aspect of my feminine. So here's just a, something to feel into. Sometimes I'll see individuals who are, you know, like they're working with Shakti and Kundalini and they're working with the feminine archetypes and the goddesses and they're really awakening to, you know, body wisdom and their intuition and all the things that come with the feminine. And they hit like a stuck point, 
they, they, they get like stuck. You know, they're like, I don't know, women's circles aren't doing it anymore. Like, like the next archetypal goddess energy, I don't know, that's not working either. Like, I don't know, my, my, my kundalini practice is just like flat. Like, it's just flat and you hit this upper limit. Sometimes that upper limit, the thing that breaks you through the upper limit is not another feminine transmission. It's not more feminine energy to resonate and vibe with your feminine energy. It's masculine consciousness to penetrate into the places that are like craving and longing to be stirred, to be touched, to be awoken. And it's those parts want to dance with consciousness. They don't want to dance with more Shakti. Right? They actually, like, they want to unionize, right? They want to unify. They want to unite. And they want to unite with their polar opposite, right? They want to polarize. That's, that's what stirs them and awakens them. And so that can happen on, at various points on our paths, you know, various points on our paths. And it's not to say that masculine energy doesn't also inspire masculine energy, right? It can go all ways where masculine inspires and invokes masculine or masculine inspires and invokes feminine or feminine invite inspires and invokes feminine or feminine inspires and invokes masculine. And you can dance with all of those. Like you can work with them all, right? They're all like conscious practices. We'll actually do that in this upcoming retreat, right? The one that I mentioned before when I started going off about creation energy. Interesting. Interesting how that weaves its way in, uh, creation energy. But uh, that retreat, February, California, uh, 2024, if you're watching this or listening to this before then, if there's spots available, we'll put a link down below. Um, they usually fill up pretty quickly, but who knows? Maybe there'll be some spots when you're still listening to this and it might be singing to you. Uh, yeah, we'll work in all four ways. It's, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's, it's actually easy once you, once you do it, like once you kind of know how to, once you have like that imprint, it's very easy to work masculine to masculine, masculine to feminine, feminine to feminine, or feminine to masculine um, for like the invoking, the gifting. Um, Okay, so let me feel a little bit more into this. Um, I probably um, I get asked about the masculine a lot in in rewilding, in rewilding for women, in you know grander uh, scapes of rewilding. I get asked about the masculine a lot, and um, it's interesting. It's interesting the, and here's something to feel into for yourself. This is maybe our next little piece is the judgments that we hold, the belief systems that we hold, the thought patterns we hold around the masculine. It's interesting how, hmm, Feel for yourself, right? You got to feel this for yourself. And this is that like radical honesty. Uh, how we oftentimes will, instead of saying, it's my relationship to the masculine that's creating this in my environment. You know, it's my belief about the masculine. It's m maybe my own masculine or the masculine that I grew up with or the masculine that I'm familiar with or the masculine that I'm comfortable with just because it's familiar with. Isn't this, feel this, this is a little crazy. We're getting a little crazy now. What if those beliefs are more powerful than you think? What if those familiar patterns are more powerful than you think? What if those thought patterns in yourself, well, we're talking creation energy, right? Like we're kind of starting to point to it a little bit, like tiny, tiny teeny tiny little bit, right? But we are way more powerful than we're aware of. We're creating much more than we are aware of. And so what if, what if your th thought systems, your belief systems, you, your conditioning, what if, what if that's creating how the masculine shows up in your world much more than, than you know? So, so I, I'm, I'm sharing this not to like make us feel bad. I'm sharing this to say, what if you were to change those thought patterns? 
what if you were to change those beliefs about the masculine? You know, what if instead of the masculine being this like toxic, patriarchal overlord, you know, maybe that's like the deep seated belief. And so that's always, that's always being put out, you know, it's, it's always actually invoking that in another. Right? Crazy. What if what you invoked in another was like sacred masculine energy, like sacred masculine energy? You know, what if that was your belief that like, that, that like, oh my God, like there's so much love in the masculine. Like there's so much care. There's so much wanting to give in the masculine. You know, like it's, there's so much. They just want, they just want to give. They want to give. They want to give their consciousness. They want to give. They want to give in a way that makes something radiate, makes something come alive, makes something happy and full of joy. That is the man, P.S. That is the masculine, right? Like that's like the raw essence of the masculine. That that is, and and that's there. Like that's in every human being. It's in it's in me. You. It's in every human being. I, I know we're now. I'm starting to now. I'm starting to lose us. Um, so let's come back to this. But imagine <laughs> you invoke that. Imagine it's not about. Oh, the men are so far behind, you know, and it's not the men, it's the masculine, you know, like the feminine has evolved to divine feminine, but the masculine, you know, just really slacking in our psyche, you know, just, it's really like, it's, there's still toxic masculine, whereas, you know, we, the feminine, we're healthy, evolved, and I'm, I'm not trying to be genderish about this, I'm just kind of ranting playfully around here. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm giggling because I have such a strong masculine in myself. Um, I have such a strong feminine in myself. And interestingly, I'll share this just as a, I don't know, a reflection on my own journey. <laughs> it's like in myself, uh, it's been, you know, big feminine, growth spurt, let's just say, or big feminine evolution, uh, awakening, we can call it, will happen. And then the masculine, it's like a teeter-totter, then the masculine will go through like big evolution, awakening, uh, up-leveling. And then the feminine, and then the masculine, and then the, you know, it's like they like teeter-totter to match each other. And I also watch that outside of myself. I watch that in my close relationships. I watch that in my world. I get to watch that in the rewilding team, right? Like I get to watch it in a whole team of individuals, this beautiful, glorious dance um, of evolution and of, you know, invoking the next highest level of the other, of the other side of the coin. Um, <laughs> okay. Let me feel, uh, <laughs> I feel like I want to rein it in, rein it in for us a little bit and uh, maybe give us a little bit on how, uh, how, you know, how can we, if you're like, I'm resonating with some of this, Sabrina, some of this is making sense to me, you know, how I would really start by getting really fucking real about your beliefs around the masculine. You, whatever the masculine means to you, maybe you have to, you know, look at your dad. Maybe that still is masculine representation for you. Or maybe it's your mom, right? My mom is a badass, right? She is like a farmer, German workhorse, ton of masculine, right? But for you, you know, maybe it's not a person. Maybe it's Maybe it's like a, you start to feel into the essence of, of masculine, but, but not, don't go like divine masculine. Cause you're just, then we're just like escaping out into la la land. 
But the invitation here is to go into the guts of your beliefs around it. The guts of your beliefs. And I promise you, if you get into the guts of your beliefs around the masculine, you will find some very interesting things that are creating some very interesting patterns in your life that may not be serving. <laughs> they may not be. Um, I know I just shared this thing about, around like how I chose my financial person, right? I chose based on a masculine energy that I know, <laughs> that I know is old, is unevolved. I know that. But it was comfortable because it reminded me of the masculinity in my family. And so I chose that. It was why it was a wild uncovering, and I don't need to go into the whole story here. Um, but then to watch as your relationship to the masculine, right? Your relationship to the masculine evolves. <laughs> my, my money's in a very different place now, right? It's in a very different place. It's being held by very, a very different level of masculine energy. Like it's actually like held by a combination of masculine and feminine energy, right? Like it's, it, it, it's interesting. Um, so that's one thing is get really, really real, you know, however you want to go into it, whatever like helps you to get deep, go talk to that deep friend, um, come into the rewilding Facebook group, you know, we'll maybe put some posts up or share something or put a question up there, right? Like that's some good conversation happens in there. Uh, if you don't have like soul friend, but you want to like communicate or connect into community or just journal, like just free flow, write or write a letter to the masculine. This is a good one. Super simple. Write a letter to like the masculine essence in your family system, maybe on both sides you know, the masculine essence in your family system, the masculine essence in your workplace, the masculine essence in, you know, maybe you were part of the military, the masculine essence in the military, the masculine essence in your team. Like I could write it, the masculine essence of the, in the rewilding team. You know, you can feel into different places to just really, you know, go like, wow, what do I see? What do I believe? And then go, you know, what if I saw this differently? Could I invoke, here's the magic, right? Here's creation magic, here's outcome, like this is magic. Can I invoke a different level of masculine and, and what can I do in myself to invoke a different level of masculine, right? So oftentimes it's my level of masculine needs to grow and evolve to be able to invoke that level of masculine that I'm wanting to witness or my feminine needs to grow and evolve in order to evoke the reciprocating vibration level of the masculine in that, right? So it can be invoked by either my masculine at that level, my feminine at that level to invoke the reciprocal, right? Got it? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, I feel there's another piece here just to share is that it's not all outside of ourselves. So I know that a lot of this conversation is, you know, relationships will be different. Um, we'll be evoking something different in the world around us, but just like sit back and for a second and like, how will your own energies di be different? you know, in, in you, if you're, um, let me feel, if your masculine moves to a place that can hold more of your feminine wildness, right? If your masculine can move to a place that it can be more discerning and protect your feminine more, if your masculine can move to a place where it can create containers, right? It can create like a sacred container for your life force to fill, it can direct, can guide decisions, right? Decisions. How, how, we won't be hearing things like, my masculine is overriding my feminine. 
I'm burnt out. Um, I haven't felt my feminine forever. You know, sometimes it's, it's, it's because our relationship to our masculine is such that we're thinking. So this, again, you got to feel for yourself, right? Because you can be at very different stages in all of these things that I've been talking about. And get creative with your thoughts too. Like let, I mean, this is a tiny little conversation that just like points to little things. So let yourself, you know, maybe you listen to this a couple times, maybe you bookmark it and you watch it a couple times and maybe you let yourself get creative with it. Maybe you listen to it while you're falling asleep and you let yourself like go down a rabbit hole or I like doing it when I'm walking for whatever reason, movement and me, when I wanna like let my, it's like a different part of my wisdom brain gets activated. You know, like there's a different wisdom that comes about. It's like when I'm taking a shower, right? Like the greatest ideas come when I'm taking a shower. It's amazing what happens. Like if I can't figure something out, I'll just go take a shower and like, ah, light bulb goes on. I really need to get like a, like a waterproof phone. I mean, I take all of my note, like little notes in my phone. I really need to get a waterproof phone so that while I'm in the shower, I can just like jot. Cause like poems come, like the most glorious poems come like while I'm in the shower. And I'm like, oh, I'll remember that when I get out. Yeah, okay, dripping wet. Like what was the first word that it started with? No idea. <laughs> so, so the invitation here is to get creative with this, right? Like let these tiny little, you know, like touching into different things, let it, let it bring more to the surface. Let it inspire you. Um, if you want to go real deep with this, uh, we'll put, there's an online program that I would recommend that we have. It's called reunion experience. Um, we'll, put that below. I don't know if it's open. It might not be open. It might just be able to get you the first workshop of it, but we'll put that below. Uh, and then the in-person, that in-person retreat, that's the first retreat where we're walking into union, you know, sacred union, the union of the masculine and feminine in yourself, outside yourself, all the m insane potential that comes with that, right? Creation energy, dragon energy. Some of you were in dragon mystery school, alchemy, like we, like the path of the alchemist opens up um, when you work in that union energy. Um, but this will be the first retreat where our doorway in is through the masculine. I love this. I love this. And of course it's open to all, right? All, all, all genders, all sexual prep, all, it's, it's open to all. Uh, wow. <laughs> I was meaning to film an astrology video today. I tried to film a full moon astrology video for y'all. Couldn't do it, couldn't do it, couldn't do it, couldn't do it. Then this, I just had this weird random inspiration while eating dinner, soup. I was eating soup and it was this, 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 this is what's alive in me. So thank you for letting me be here with you and bring through what's alive for me. Um, I love our community. I love that I get to be here with you. It's a co-creation, right? Without you all, I wouldn't be here. And I am really well aware of that. And it just puts me in this real deep place of gratitude um, and humbleness, right? It's, uh, I get to do this because you do this. Um, so thank you from like the depths of my heart. It's really beautiful. Uh, I'd love to see you in the comments. I'm always here the first couple of days after a video goes out. That's me responding the first couple of days. Oftentimes, sometimes it's the team when I'm super um, busy, but I always read the comments coming in right after a video and I'm so grateful for them. So if you want to drop a comment, uh, that'd be beautiful or hang out in the Facebook group or I don't know, come to California if you're feeling crazy. All right. I will see you when I see you, where I see you and how I see you. Mwah.